Thank you very much, Jerry. Um, it's a super exciting time to be here for Norwood. Uh, we're in the midst of some fundamental developments and love to share some, some news with you as we go through. Um, Norwood's um, a complicated business and I thought I'd try to put a couple of slides in front of you that explain a little bit in very simple terms what it is we do. Um, very broadly speaking, we're a communication services business. Uh, we started out with more of a telco focus and we've migrated over the last two years to be predominantly uh, focused on uh, SaaS business services and also uh, SaaS consumer services. And you can sort of see we do this by, by creating apps that acts as, as the on-ramp onto these devices and then very powerful cloud platforms that integrate either back into the uh, telco networks or back into corporate uh, platforms and systems. Um, our mission is really just to deliver an amazing user experience and uh, our sort of relentless focus on this has led to uh, uh, material development, which I'm going to talk to you a little bit about now, um, uh, in relation to actually how we're getting our, our apps out to, uh, to consumers in the first instance and also out to enterprises in the second. Um, just a little background on our company. Um, we have had about five million downloads of our apps uh, around the, uh, the world so far. We um, have extremely high rankings on the app stores. So if you look at Google Play, which is a global measure of app store satisfaction, we have a ranking of about 4.22. Skype, I think, is sitting at 4.1. So we're beating uh, world market leading communications app at their own game. And in the Apple uh, App Store in Australia, at least, uh, we're sitting at an outstanding rating of 4.5. We, um, we raised uh, some $16 million over the last two years since we did the RTO in June 2015 uh, through successive capital raisings. We're still in a growth phase. Um, and uh, we're just going hard at it in terms of tackling the, the market opportunities that we see before us. There's never really been a better time to look at Norwood as a potential investment opportunity. And I say that from the perspective of our share price. We're about 10, 15% up on our offer price when we did the RTO, about 2.2 cents. Um, and uh, set that against the uh, huge progress that we've actually made on, on both developing customer relationships, signing distribution agreements, and also completing our technology portfolio. I think if you take a look at where we were uh, 21 months ago compared to where we are now, uh, pretty compelling opportunity and um, part of that is you know uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating and uh, whether customers are actually buying our solution whether we're signing material relationships um, we are um, using obviously our user interfaces on these apps as the kind of calling card and you can see um, world phone is what we started with uh, we started with a focus on really providing cheap long distance calling and roaming calls um, world phone has now evolved to become um, a marketing component of uh, certain large organizations' uh, marketing campaigns, as well as also um, the front end to some valuable business services that have nothing to do with uh, particularly cost savings per se, but more addressing operational needs inside organizations. That leads me to the second row that you see there, which is World Message. <clears throat> We've been working on World Message for about a year now. The two apps together provide what's really called a, a fully virtual uh, phone experience. And um, I have some good news about World Message. Um, we've just had the approval literally in the last few minutes from the Apple App Store that we're ready to go and release it. And uh, barring any other unforeseen uh, circumstances before the end of the week, very certainly, uh, we're going to be bringing World Message out onto the App Store and to uh, very important corporate applications that sit alongside World Message. Just in terms of, again, talking about the uh, social evidence of whether customers like our apps or not, uh, these are the actual hard results we've achieved to date. When we go into large uh, distribution channel partners or large enterprises and they say, well, who are you? What have you done? Uh, this sort of evidence is highly persuasive in getting them to start working on piloting our solution and eventually adopting it and deploying it through their organization. And they're, they're really sensational ratings. The ones on the left are actually uh, self-assessed from our users using the app. As you make calls, we prompt you for ratings at the end. And that's the current data as is, uh, as of, I think, two days ago, of where we are in terms of uh, user ratings. And you can see the, the 4.2, again, on the Google Play Store is, is basically a very recent metric. You can go on there yourself and verify those numbers for yourself. Um, I want to talk about one of the most significant commercial developments that our, our company has achieved to date, and that is um, 
We started going out acquiring customers by ourselves. We found that it was difficult to try and find the valuable monetizable customers in the midst of all the ones that just want a free service. Uh, so we, we've stopped doing that and uh, instead we decided to focus on channel partners. And we have found uh, a super interesting company called Affinian International who we announced I think about two months ago, end of January, that we'd signed a distribution agreement with. Um, Affinian have 5,500 clients in the financial services and airlines and e-commerce space where they provide the what we call the engagement and loyalty benefits platform uh, for these companies. So if you have, a, for example, a platinum card with a credit card issuer, likelihood is uh, that someone like Affinian or um, Affinian themselves indeed have actually gone out and sourced all the benefits that you get with that platinum card. For example, the concierge service, the travel insurance, all of those benefits get packaged up sold to you as an annual fee. The platinum, I mean, all the card issuers, by the way, um, and the slide sort of speaks to this a little bit, uh, are very hungry for these kinds of benefits because the transaction cost fees that you charge per credit card transaction, you may be aware, are getting squeezed down by the regulators. So the card issuers have a real problem. They're going to lose revenue if they don't do anything. And where they've gone uh, almost wholesale from what we can see is looking at adding more value into the annual membership program that they have with those credit cards. And as a result, they've gone to people like Affinion and say, please source us more valuable differentiated benefits. We started working with them last year. We've gone through all the technical due diligence phases, all the provisioning logistics design for uh, uh, delivering a high quality white label experience to their clients. That's all complete now. And we're in the middle of signing term sheets, uh, which we expect to conclude over the coming sort of three to four weeks with one of the very largest firms in the uh, credit card industry. And we're referring not to a credit card issuer, but an actual credit card processor. The credit card processors, without naming who they are, are people like Amex, Visa, MasterCard, UnionPay. And they're responsible each individually for more than a billion cards each. And uh, they've looked at our service. Uh, they have a lot of market research to understand, you know, what would be a valuable benefit to deliver as a package of services. And uh, we're super excited to announce that, you know, we're, we're in this uh, term sheet negotiation stage. We've gone through the technical feasibility. They kind of like the market idea. And we're down to uh, basically arguing about the schedule at the end of the distribution contract, which rol revolves around pricing and uh, what kind of margin and volume breaks we're going to give this credit card processor. But it's a super exciting development for our business. Um, the revenues that we're modeling from that one relationship, uh, we're dealing with two arms of the credit card processor, by the way, uh, for both North America and EMEA. Uh, each one will lead to revenues of uh, two to two and a half million dollars per region per app. Um, they're interested in World Phone, but they're also very interested in another application I haven't mentioned yet called World Wi-Fi, uh, which is all about getting Wi-Fi everywhere. Um, and we expect to get sort of similar revenue streams for both, if not more, for the World Wi-Fi opportunity. So we're looking at a, a downstream probably eight to $10 million annualized 60% gross margin plus uh, revenue stream arising from just this one client uh, through Affinian. This uh, credit card processor is about six or 7% of Affinian's revenue. So I mentioned earlier they have 5,500 clients in the financial services space. They, they account for something like 20% of the value of all benefits delivered across these credit cards around the world. So they're one of the major players, if not the largest player. And uh, we are just delighted to be uh, progressing and actually making progress with someone like that. Very simple business from our point of view. We take their brand guidelines, we repurpose World Phone into a new look and feel, and then we sell it through um, their channels. Um, I don't want to focus really a little bit just on the enterprise side of what we do. Um, two years ago, roughly when we did the RTO, Nord was very focused on what, what we call tariff arbitrage which was delivering cheaper uh, long distance and roaming minutes. And um, the parts of our solution that we had in place at the time were World Phone, we ju we're just on the cusp of releasing Corona, and then just dealing with that bottom uh, left corner, um, point number one there called voice. So we we're all about delivering telephony services. Um, I want to outline a couple of scenarios for you just to understand where we've moved to. So we're still focused on voice, but we're focusing on operational requirements that large organizations have in relation to how they manage not just the, the voice minutes, but the actual identity of users and, and how that works with, uh, within their organizational requirements. And I'll give you two examples. Large healthcare provider in Queensland has 20,000 field nurses. 
these field nurses are using their own personal cell phone to make calls to patients and outpatients, and they're actually technically immediately in breach of what, uh, what regulations the, the healthcare provider has internally, but also, more importantly, the external uh, HIPAA level requirements that require that they protect the privacy of healthcare workers uh, when they're working in these fields. They have two choices. They could either go and provision for these 20,000 nurses a completely new separate business phone per nurse. You're thinking that might sound expensive, it probably is. Or they could license a service for us as a SAS fee where we provide an individual unique identity for that nurse that they can hide behind when they're making all their calls using our apps, but uh, providing a, a virtual phone number. And um, what, we're, what we're going to be uh, announcing with World Message, and you can see the, the three um, sections there that are, are striped in red as new, uh, we're also releasing a pretty revolutionary idea, which is all about having virtual IDs that you can, uh, you can use to obfuscate the number. If any of you have used Uber lately, um, you'll notice that when you're calling the taxi driver, the, a different number from their actual mobile phone comes up. It's that kind of principle and application. And we're finding a lot of applications for this, not just with healthcare, but large travel agent is dealing with 40% um, uh, churn. Uh, I think I'm talking out of school. You won't know who they are. 40% uh, churn of all their travel agent employees uh, across the world. They have 25,000 of them. And um, they have a real problem of business leakage. Again, the travel agent uh, staffs themselves are using a cell phone like this, which is their own. As they churn out of the organization, the contact details and the, the valuable interaction between the travel agent's clients and uh, these agents travels with the cell phone. And they really need an identity that they can hold back, take off the actual end user, and then uh, put back onto uh, the new agent that uh, fills the role of that person. So they're, they're two. They're not really related to, um, in any way, the, uh, the sort of tariff arbitrage opportunity, hopefully you can see. Now, we've, we've got two applications here that are labelled as new, and I just want to speak about them for a second. Um, some of you may be familiar with a company called Salesforce.com. Uh, it's a large company active in the customer relationship management arena. Uh, CRM is a, an application. I think I have a slide on this. I'll, I'll speak to it just very quickly. CRM is an application which uh, people need to track the interaction of clients with um, uh, their salespeople. And it's really only as good as the data you can put in. We're releasing with World Message a revolutionary idea uh, concept and actually have it working currently in, in, uh, in the field for uh, tracking automatically uh, all of the client interactions when the salesperson critically is calling or texting them. If you make a text message to a, a client, how does that data actually get into the CRM? The honest answer is it probably doesn't. We built the first automated solution on the planet to actually solve that problem. Similarly with compliance, and, and this is more relating to the financial services sector, um, uh, you may be aware in uh, financial services around the world, but specifically in the UK and the U uh, US to begin with, uh, there's an obligation to archive all business communications. Now, it turns out it's very easy to archive emails, probably easy to archive desk phone calls that you are making at trading tariffs. It's very hard, uh, if not impossible, to generally archive text messaging and uh, voice calls that you've made on your cell phone as uh, financial services professionals calling clients or being texted from some client from another country. And uh, we are also launching uh, today and uh, through tomorrow uh, a very key application that's servicing this financial services space. There's about a half million professional uh, financial services workers just in the City of London, to give you an idea. Uh, we're targeting both the UK and the US to begin with for the launch of that product. Just to give you an idea on the compliance, um, uh, what we do is we spool all the uh, interaction, the metadata, uh, from these apps automatically in the background without the users uh, having to do anything in terms of interaction. Uh, quietly to what the organization most likely already has in the form of an archival hub. Uh, these hubs have been put in place just initially to capture the, the email traffic that these organizations generate and receive. Um, and uh, the hubs have APIs that we can integrate into fairly easily. We're, we're launching initially with support for Global Relay, which is a major, uh, major player in the space with 27,000 uh, financial services clients. And uh, we're partnering also with Proofpoint and Smash, who have uh, smaller numbers, but also quite important clients in that area. The CRM logging just gives you a quick idea of what we're doing here. So as you make phone calls and, and text messages, 
uh, for the first time, these are quietly being archived and captured within client records, so the salesperson doesn't have to remember to actually uh, uh, make any uh, um, record of having contact with the client. They can go back and be reminded, saying, oh, yes, I texted that person here and there, and this is where I made some calls, and they can annotate those, those activity levels. To the extent that a CRM is only as good as this kind of data in there, this is revolutionary, and we're getting a huge amount of interest not just from Salesforce, but Oracle themselves um, in the UK are um, uh, showing a great level of interest in, um, in this platform. They're providing a kind of challenger brand to Salesforce. They have a new cloud-based solution called Oracle CX, and we're super excited to be working with them uh, to uh, take this into a certain number of their client accounts uh, over the coming months. The markets I've described are pretty large, and um, you know you might think, you know, how, how on earth are we going to kind of bite in and tackle those kinds of markets? Um, not just on the loyalty side, if Affinian sort of do roughly 10, 20 percent of that total affinity market uh, in the BYOD and compliance and CRM spaces. You know, they're very large spaces as well. Um, we have a pretty well-developed growth plan, and um, it's very much focused around developing these as SaaS propositions. Um, the roaming market and the long distance calling market, I'm not sure they're going to be around as a valuable thing to go and tackle for Norwood for much longer than maybe 18 months. But the idea of permanently improving how your salespeople interact with your clients or permanently solving the archival problem for banks and legal services and healthcare services or protecting the identity of nurses who are out in the field or dealing with employee churn, these are enduring problems that we believe have merit and value over many years. And so we're structuring this as a kind of recurring SaaS revenue relationship, very high margin. We charge typically a fee of 10 to $20 per month per seat. And uh, our costs are uh, well below 30% uh, you know, for most of these services. And um, you know, that model is not a, a strange model from the point of view of other tech companies that have gone before us. And we've studied very closely, the, in particular, a bunch of the the cohort that have listed on NASDAQ over the last um, two or three years. And we like what they've done. We understand how they've allocated their resources, how they've grown various parts of their business, and we're tracking to deliver a similar kind of growth. And eventually, uh, our ambition is to get to the scale of being able to list uh, in, a, in a major foreign exchange of that level. Thank you very much.